Hey, what's going on? Coach Luca here from Big Round Fitness Performance. If you hear the beat in the back, it's because we like to dance now. But seriously, we got stronger going on in the back. And we still wanted to shoot this video, like, because this is, well, it's important. We're trying to do as many, I say, more content videos on coaching and cueing specific exercises because, man, like, a, there's just a lot of stuff that can go wrong. Or should I say there's a lot of uh, re bad repetitions that done over time can really affect you. You're not going to usually, I would say, hurt yourself off of one rep, but when you do it over time, like, that, obviously that can add up and tissues will reach threshold and bam, there you go. So, like, it's, it's twofold. We want to get most results out of this and we also want to keep you safe. Now, a great exercise, the Bulgarian split squat. Uh, some people call it the rear foot elevated split squat. There's a lot of different names. It's called the Slovenian split squat. I'm Slovenian, but I'm gonna break it down to, because uh, definitely like just about everywhere I go, I see this exercise kind of butchered. Um, and so that, like I said, you get the most muscle tension and the least wear and tear on the joints. So, you know, if you don't have, by the way, this little split squat device, uh, you can get it perform better, but like this is phenomenal for, like I said, rear foot elephant uh, stuff. So I'm gonna show the drill on here, but I'm also just gonna show you, because for most people, they might be doing it on the bench. All right, so when we talk about a rear foot elevated split squat, we're talking about bringing that back foot up, and usually most people will keep that, that foot open. And I'm gonna talk about some of the problems that happen with that open, uh, open foot, okay? Because if, if you have tight, I will say tight calves and Achilles tendons right here, you'll get a lot of times, you might get a calf cramp, you might get a, a, a cramp in the bottom of your foot, right? The fascia, big toe cramp, all those, all those things might cramp up. So it's not a great position because if you're cramping up, you can't focus on exercise and you can't focus on getting maximal tension out of it, right? And you know, the, I would say the, the solution is to go on your toes, but the problem with that is it's like a lot harder to go deeper because now you have to have toe mobility, you have to have ankle mobility, which most people just don't have. Okay, so we, we go with the open foot. And like I said, this still works, you know, this still works if you're doing it on the bench. Um, but once again, once I set this up and don't mind, like I said, my reps right now, this would be a Bulgarian split squat, right? And we're gonna go over it, okay? You'd go and do it on the bench. The reason why I love this is because you can bring that foot over and now it's not limiting you, right? This is not limiting now your ankle mobility so we can set it up. Now what you'll see on a Bulgarian split squat a lot of times is people setting up and getting really upright or even arching at the beginning, right? You're arching. So from here, as they go down, you can see I'm moving a lot from my low back and now I'm feeling this hip, but I'm not feeling it necessarily in a good way. I might even feel knee pain, I might feel foot pain, right? And I'm driving out of it, okay? That's the inappropriate way to do it, okay? We don't even, most of the time, teach a straight, like we don't teach that much of a straight down because too many people push off that back leg. So you'll see, like, pushing off this back leg, which redistributes force, but what we want, we want tension on this front leg, okay? We want muscle tension and force through this front leg. So, when I set up, watch what I'm gonna do, okay? First of all, you have to find the right distance. Now, everybody's gonna have a different limb length. So if you're too close, right, you're not gonna get the most out of the exercise. If you're too far, now all of a sudden, you're not gonna be able to get that range because this is gonna block you, you're gonna have to arch. So you find just the right position, and what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna get my weight over that front leg. And the way that I like to teach this is, you should be able to elevate your back leg and feel that front leg. It's there just enough for support, okay? Another thing, I keep my knee bent, so it's like a soft knee. I like to call this a soft knee, so it's not locked out for a number of reasons. One, we wanna keep tension on that front leg, on that quad, right? The other thing, too, is there's quite a few people that will hyperextend this to stress out their knee. So we want a soft knee to start this position. I'm gonna lean over and feel that whole weight of, the, uh, of, my, of my body over that front foot. I'm gonna engage my abs and I'm gonna make sure my hips are square, okay? You'll see this a lot as well. Notice that back foot opens up. So as I'm going down, you'll see like the, the hips open, the low back rotate. So we want to make sure our hips are square, our weight is over that front leg, I got a soft knee here, and instead of going straight down, because I have this angle, I'm going to pull myself down 
into this angled position, into my glute, okay? And then I'm going to push myself up, back into that same position. So pull myself down, long spine, pack chin, push myself up. Pull myself down, push myself up, okay? My foot is spazzing because I literally just did these weighted. <laughs> Not the greatest of ideas. But you notice, the, the point that I want to make is I'm using just body weight here, okay? And it's creating a ton of tension on that front leg. So, obviously I could be doing this with dumbbells, right? So my dumb, everything would stay the same, and I would obviously have dumbbells hanging here, okay? I could be doing this with a goblet position kettlebell. I could be doing this with a sandbag, two KVs, front squat position. Now, if I was doing a front squat position, I probably would get a little bit less lean, which is why kettlebells, dumbbells, things like that are ideal. If I was doing a back squat position or safety squat bar, very similar, right? I'm still going with those same rules, okay? Because once again, let's think about what we want. We either want to get stronger and produce more force through this leg, okay? Or we want to create as much tension as possible through this leg. What's great about this is I was mentioning that pull yourself down analogy, okay? Here's something that I don't like to see, especially people that are not, I'll say, more advanced on this, is you'll see a lot of dropping into it, right? Just drop in and out, drop in and out, drop in and out. And you'll see the body shifting, right? Low back, flexing, extending, upper back, flexing, extending. Where if I pull myself down with strength and control, now I have time under tension. I'm also gonna stretch this hip flexor out. Right, so now we're strengthening this leg, opening up this hip, okay? Pull myself down with strength, core is engaged, chin is packed. I feel my whole foot, right? Every part, I'm not pushing through my heel, I'm feeling my whole foot. Big toe, little toe, heel, it's like a tripod. And I push through that whole foot, I push into the ground, drive up, soft knee. Pull myself down, feel that whole foot, abs engaged, tall spine, and push away again, okay? I promise you that if you do it that way for eight to 10 reps, just do it with body weight. Take two to three seconds to get down. Pause a second at the bottom. Push up, right? Push into the ground. And you'll see the difference in the tension in that front leg. We do this every time any, and somebody new comes in, we're coaching it up, and it's like, holy crap, I gotta go down with weight. And that's okay, that keeps you honest, right? Because now you're doing it the right way. And then you can build back up to there and that's how we get a lot of results. And see that angle, we're able to pull ourselves into the glute a little bit more. And so we get quad to fire, we get glute to work a lot, right? We get that full leg to really get a ton of tension. So that's important. Now, I'm gonna come back to just mention the hips. You guys may have seen a couple of videos where it comes to the half kneeling position. And what's really important here is that square hip, okay? Now when I talk about the square hip, even we're in a, in a Bulgarian split squat position, here's what can happen. If you'll we'll shoot like the front of my hip, you'll see this. Whoop. All right, notice this is square hip, and the hip will fall out. So you'll start in this falling out hip position, start going down, and hitting kind of bone on bone here. So my cue for this is push this butt cheek into this hip. All right, and as soon as I do that, notice, if it's standing out here, I'm gonna push this butt cheek into this hip without this hip flying out. Now my abs are feeling it. My hips are square. This is called ASIS. It's a little bone right here, that bone that you feel. See, now I leveled out these two bones and now I can pull myself down. I keep pushing the hip into the other hip, snapping through. Man, it's so much more tension happening in that leg because of those little tweaks. And the only way for you to, to see and feel it is to actually try this out and see the difference. Now, here's the, the things that are gonna happen. Number one, you're gonna feel those muscles more. Number two, if you have some hip and low back issues, that might help you get out of those, okay? Depending on what's going on, right? So this is not a fix for everything, but it can significantly help you out, okay? Core is gonna work more. It's gonna take your low back out of it, right? Because we're gonna be in a better position. And once again, more stress on the muscle, less stress on the joint opening up that hip flexor. So those are just some of the tips uh, for a Bulgarian split squat that I feel will really help you improve it and get more out of it. Like we're always looking like, how can you improve your results and be more safe, especially over time? How can you keep progressing without beating up your joints? So that down the line, 
you can continue to get results. Not only look better, but feel better and perform better. So try out that Bulgarian split squat variation, and I'll be back with a coach's corner from Bigger Ground Fitness Performance.